thank you dr chayan for the introduction honorable chairpersons of the session uh, respected panelists distinguished guests from home and abroad a very good afternoon to all today i will be speaking about the prenatally diagnosed case of complex congenital heart disease and how we stabilized and evaluated it postnatally our patient was a male baby one day old he was a term 37 weeker with appropriate for gestational age weighing 3.4 kg admitted in our nicu on 18th of october 2020 immediately after birth with dyspnea in the form of fast breathing and chest retraction his apgar was 7 by 10 and 9 by 10 at 1 and 5 minutes respectively he was antenatally diagnosed as a case of complex congenital heart disease and was delivered by elective lower uterine cesarean section for the same his mother was a 25 year old female para 2 plus 0 under regular antenatal checkup she was a hypothyroid since last 2 and a half years under medication with tablet thyroxine 50 microgram she developed gestational diabetes at 36 weeks of gestation that was controlled by dietary restrictions her anomaly scan at 20 and 28 weeks revealed atrioventricular septal defect with narrow pulmonary artery arising from the hypoplastic right ventricle and a dilated aorta seen arising from the dilated left ventricle her ultrasonogram at 37 weeks revealed all cardiac chambers not well defined the interatrial and the interventricular septum were absent unfortunately no fetal echocardiogram was done On examination of the baby we found the baby was dyspneic evident by mild chest retraction and tachypnea with breath uh, with 70 breaths per minute and uh, saturation was maintained at 90% with 2 liter per minute oxygen breath sound was vesicular with bilateral good air entry baby was normothermic pink with acrocyanosis good reflex and activity his capillary refill time was 2 second pulse volume was adequate and capillary blood glucose level was 3.6 mmol per liter there was no external physical anomaly seen on the examination of the cardiovascular system heart rate was 136 beats per minute it was regular normal precordium with no visible pulsation no palpable thrill p2 or left parasternal heave apex beat was normal located in the right fourth intercostal space at the mid clavicular line first heart sound was normal and second heart sound was loud and single an ejection systolic murmur of grade 3 over 6 non radiating was heard in the right third intercostal space all other systemic examinations revealed normal findings after hospital admission the baby was given thermal care oxygen via nasal cannula kept nothing for oral started on iv fluids prophylactic antibiotics and was planned for further evaluation we did his chest x ray arterial blood gas septic workup echocardiography cardiac monitoring and capillary blood glucose monitoring these were his investigations of the blood reports which revealed normal findings except the arterial blood gas which revealed hypoxia after which we increased his oxygen level to 5 liters per, per minute this is the chest x ray of the baby which shows he has an he has an evident dextrocardia with the apex of the heart pointing towards the right there is no evident cardiomegaly and the lung fields also appear normal the abdominal situs also appears uh, is also normal with the liver on the right side and the left lobe of the gr liver grossly enlarged thus um, covering the fundic gas of the stomach now this is the echocardiography of the baby it is a 2d echo taken in the subcostal uh, four chamber view which shows that the apex of the heart is in the right side revealing it is a case of dextrocardia and also a complete av canal defect the two ventricles seem to be of equal size with from which we got the impression that the av canal defect was a balanced type this is another 2d echo taken in the subcostal parasitical view which shows the arising of the truncus and giving off the pulmonary left pulmonary artery here and the right pulmonary artery here which is a bit not appreciated well but it was present and the this, this is the ductus which uh, joins the left pulmonary artery with the truncus arteriosus This is the color Doppler echo of the previous uh, video that we saw. It shows there is a mild common AV valve regurgitation, and this is the flow of the ductus from left to right. 
this is another 2d uh, this is another echocardiographic view taken from the suprasternal arch view which also shows there is a presence of patent ductus satriosus so from this we got the impression that it was a case of complex congenital heart disease with dextrocardia with truncus arteriosus type 3 complete balanced av canal defect with a common av valve a large inlet bsg and a large ostium primum asg mild common av valve regurgitation and mild hyperkinetic ph a moderate PDA measuring three millimeter with left to right chunt and good biventricular function. So our diagnosis was that he was a term 37 weeker, appropriate for gestational age with 3.4 kilograms, with infant of diabetic mother, with baby of hypothyroid, with complex congenital heart disease, with dextrocardia, with truncus arteriosus type three, with complete balanced AV, AV canal defect, with moderate PDA, with mild pulmonary hypertension. So we managed the baby with uh, oral frusamide and digoxin and uh, ST inhibitor that is captopril. The condition of the baby gradually improved and baby was discharged on day 10 of age when he was on full breastfeed, saturation maintained at 94% on room air, heart rate 111 beats per minute, respiratory rate 46 breaths per minute and temperature 98 degree Fahrenheit. This time is short. Please do. Our, our plan of management was to do a CT angiogram for better delineation of the great vessels and do the surgical correction accordingly. This is the baby two days prior to the discharge when he was off oxygen, pink in color, and he was on vitally stable and on OG feed. Now there are some case reports. Uh, this is the case report which shows there was a prenatal diagnosis of complete AVSD with truncus arteriosus. This reveals that this type of case is extremely rare association and uh, until the publication of this uh, report uh, that is in 2007 only one case had been prenatally diagnosed rest all were only postnatally diagnosed this is another article which uh, shows that uh, this case is a very rare and surgery has been attempted so uh, far time is up please uh, do it uh, only in quick. three no. surgical attempts only in three cases thank you very much for your patience sharing stay safe and stay healthy thank you Thank you for your excellent presentation. Uh, may I request Dr. Nabin Sheikh, madam, to comment in this regard? This is a uh, complex congenital heart disease. Nabin Sheikh, madam, please. Uh, do you have any comments in this uh, case? Actually, this is an excellent presentation. Uh, it's because it was diagnosed antenatally, very complex heart disease was diagnosed antenatally. That is very challenging, very difficult case. Excellent presentation, and I have no comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now I'm request, may I request uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Tuhinak, madam, please, ma'am, will you comment in this regard? Excellent presentation and antenatal, antenatal diagnosis is very challenging. So is she correctly diagnosed and she has to congratulate, but uh, she has to maintain the time. <laughs> so only the job is that the time limitation, she exceeds the time. But her presentation and the, uh, was excellent and, and her diagnosis was really challenging, the prenatal diagnosis. i like to congratulate her. Uh, Dr. Chan, can I tell something? Uh, of course, ma'am, please. I, I wanted the speaker why this is type 3 truncus arteriosus. Can you uh, just explain to me? Explain to us. Ma'am, uh, thank you for the question. This was the type 3 truncus arteriosus because uh, we saw that the uh, left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery, they were arising from the sides of the truncus. There was no main PA segment. Okay. Uh, there is some uh, type 1 is also from the side of the uh, aorta. M means uh, why this is type 3 because... Type 2 is from the both side of the aorta and type 3 is from the posterior surface of the aorta. And from the side of the aorta, it is type 1. So I think that can you identify, is it from the posterior surface? Uh, we, uh, we saw that it was arising from the sides, ma'am, from both the sides. I think it was probably type 1. Type no, one. But there was no, like, we did not find any main PA segment. In type 1, I think uh, we have the four, initially the main PA segment, which divides into the right and the left. But but type 3 will be arised separately from the posterior surface. Separately. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. Uh, what about the types? But the diagnosis is confirmed.